Chapter 18 The rocky cusp of coastline bordering the slum began in mangrove swamp at its left and swept through deeper water around a long, new-moon curve of white-crested wavelets to Nariman Point. The monsoon was at full strength, but just at that moment, no rain fell from the grey-black ocean of the lightning-fractured sky. Wading birds swooped into the shallow swamp and nestled among the slender, trembling reeds. Fishing boats plied their nets on the ragged waves of the bay. Children swam and played along the bouldered, pebble-strewn shoreline. On the Golden Crescent, across the small bay, apartment towers for the rich stood shoulder to shoulder to shoulder, all the way to the embassy district at the point. In the large courtyards and recreation areas of those towers, the wealthy walked and took the air. Seen from the distant slum, the white shirts of the men and colorful saris of the women were like so many beads threaded by a meditating mind on the black strings of asphalt paths. The air, there on that rocky fringe of the slum, was clean and cool. The silences were large enough to swallow occasional sounds. The area was known as the Kolaba Back Bay. There were few places in the city better suited to the spiritual and physical stock-taking that a wanted man worries himself with when the omens are bad enough. What satisfies me about a paragraph like that when I have written one and taken a long time to write it is a number of factors. The first is the, the power of description, that it can take somebody to a vision that isn't really there. These are just black and white lines on a white page. You know, these are marks on a page, but you hope that you take them there visually. I hope that the second thing is that you take some, the reader from that observational viewpoint into the personal at the end of it and the preoccupations of the narrator so that it is its own little journey of a view, almost a bird's eye view, that sweeps in to the introspection and preoccupations of the author or the narrator at the end there. It should have, if it satisfies me, a certain kind of a rhythm. It should have a cadence that allows someone to read it out loud without having to have huge breaths or having to stumble somewhere. It should have a flow and a rhythm that allows people to go with it. It's not constantly um, short sentence, jump sentence, short sentence, and so forth that's going to keep people in a different state of mind, which you might use if you're writing an action sequence, for example. But in this more languid piece, what satisfies me when I feel happy with it at the end, as I do with a paragraph like this, is its fluidity, its resonance, and its ability to take the reader from a big perspective or a meta perspective into the internal perspective of the character within a, a, a small journey of a paragraph.